What's up? Today we have a performance review of the KD-15. So I got this pair back in August of 2022 in order to wear for Nine Man Nationals. Myself and a couple of other back row players decided to get some back row shoes and we landed on the KD-15s. <laughs> These retail at $150. This particularly is the Aimbot colorway, and I recently checked on StockX, and they're actually going for $290, which is kind of crazy. So as you can see, it's a pretty loud colorway, a uh, bright highlighter yellow slash green um, with a multicolor outsole. We have some design hits, number seven on the back for his number, or I guess his old number. I think he's gonna wear 35 on the Suns, uh, but Seven on the back, on the bottom of the heel. We have Easy on the pull tab on the back. We also have KD right here on the tongue. So yeah, a lot of small details like that all throughout the shoe. Actually for specific colorways, these are actually going on sale on Nike right now for around $130, or I've also seen in certain outlet stores them going for $129. So these at $129, $130 are great value in my opinion. But we will go ahead and get started with the performance review from the volleyball perspective, because that's mainly what I've been using these shoes for. To get us started, probably the worst thing about this shoe is the break-in experience. So I can't remember another shoe that was more painful to break in than these, other than maybe the Kobe 7 or the Jordan 35s. Those were also very painful to break in. And these are no exception. They hurt so much especially on the lateral part of my foot, on the outside part, like I constantly had to untie, take them off between sets uh, or in the middle of practice or in the middle of matches because they hurt my feet that much. But trust me, it is worth it to break them in because once you get past that point, these shoes feel amazing on your foot. All right, let's get started with the upper. So for most of the shoe, it is this breathable upper, which is made out of mesh. And then on the back of the shoe, we have the heel cup, which is covered in suede. And then on the medial and on the lateral sides of the shoe, we have this plastic guard for added lockdown and supports. So the upper of the shoe doesn't really require any break in time. This mesh is very soft and pliable. The tongue here has a lot of holes for ventilation and padding. So tying down and lacing down your shoes is very comfortable. And on the back part, there's padding all around your ankle and your Achilles area which feels great on your, your feet. And as you can see on the lateral portion of the plastic guard, there are two holes to be able to loop your laces through for added lockdown and support. And the same thing goes for the medial side. You can loop your laces through two holes here. And the medial guards actually do a great job keeping your midfoot locked down in the shoe. So when you're making lateral cuts side to side, these shoes definitely have you covered and provide great containment. All right, moving on to the fit of the shoe. This is where it gets a little bit iffy and where I had problems with, especially during the break-in process. But, so as most of you already know, KD is this long, slim, lanky, awkward-sized basketball player. And typically his shoes are known to be on the long and narrow side. And I think these shoes fit that description pretty well. So during the break-in process, I did have a lot of heel slip in the shoe. And in talking to friends and watching other performance reviews, a lot of people had this issue of heel slip. So I think this has to do a lot with the shape of this heel cup. You can see that this protrudes out a little bit, which provides a little bit more space in the heel. So I did not feel as locked down in the heel area as I would like to, especially during the break-in process. I do tie a runner's knot when I play, and that did help a lot with the heel slippage issues. But what I noticed is after the break-in period, and having the runner's knot, I didn't notice the heel slip issues as much. So I would definitely recommend tying a runner's knot to help with the heel slip issues. I've also heard of other people manually add an extra hole to help with the heel slip issue. But so far after the breaking period, I haven't had to do that. And the runner's knot was enough for me. But in general, I would say the fit isn't the strongest point of the shoe. It is a little bit on the longer side. So true to size, you could probably get away with, and maybe go down half a size. Surprisingly enough, this shoe isn't as narrow as his previous model, so even if you're a wide footer, I think you should be okay with going true to size. All right, on to the cushioning. So Nike doesn't really specify what foam is used on the midsole. 
I would say it is on the firmer, more responsive side of things. So not as soft as something like Kushlon, and it is used throughout the whole shoe. The midsole is not caged at all, so it does provide enough compression for good responsiveness and court feel. And I think it makes sense for the foam of the midsole to be on the slightly firmer side because this shoe also features a full length Zoom Air strobo unit, which is probably my favorite feature of the shoe because it feels awesome. Um, it's bouncy, it provides great impact protection, and it doesn't sacrifice too much court feel because the foam is on the firmer side. So it runs through, again, full length of the outsole uh, and it is slightly exposed in the middle of the shoe underneath this plastic shank plate. I would probably not wear these outdoors because if you step on something sharp in the middle of your shoe, well, you're gonna pop the Zoom airbag. So I would recommend do not wear these outside, but this cushion setup feels great, especially when you're playing volleyball. So when you're jumping, there's a lot of energy return from the Zoom Air. Also, because there's a lot of forefoot flex here, so it helps a lot in that regard. When you're landing, this provides great impact protection, especially in the forefoot area. Again, because of the Zoom Air. And I would say these are still fairly responsive and you don't sacrifice too much court feel if that's something that you enjoy. So it's a great balance between impact protection, energy return, and court feel all in this, you know, whatever the foam is, plus full length Zoom Air shovel unit. So I really enjoyed this cushion setup and I think this would work for pretty much every position. So middles, you're covered, outside hitters, opposites, you're covered, setter, you're covered. Even as a libero or DS, you probably don't care as much about impact protection and you care more about court feel. This still checks that box um, and is very comfortable. All right, onto the traction setup. So. The general pattern is like this heat map, contour map, uh, multi-directional pattern, kind of similar to the Kobe 9 in essence, but it is different. It's not like a fingerprint, but it does kind of have a similar pattern to be able to cover you in all directions. So on this pair, this is a solid rubber compound and the rubber is kind of on the medium soft side, which is another reason why I think you should not wear these outdoors because I think the traction on this would wear away pretty fast based on how soft the rubber compound is. But as far as traction, these are great. Like I barely had to wipe. I'm covered in all directions. So the traction pattern actually continues onto the midsole of the shoe in a lot of high wear areas. So this lateral portion right here, the medial portion right here, and even parts of the heel, medial and lateral sides. And what this helps with is when you're pushing off at an awkward angle or your foot is kind of tilted, you'll still have some bite and traction onto the court. So that did help in certain situations and I love it when shoes do that as long as it doesn't take away from you know, the foam of the midsole. So with the traction pattern being multi-directional and the rubber compound being somewhat tacky, it makes for a very solid traction and I enjoyed it thoroughly. All right, to wrap up, KD's 15 signature model is a beast of a shoe. I really enjoy it. It has definitely tracked my rotation, so I'll always bring it with me in my car in case I need to switch out of whatever shoe I'm wearing or testing at the time. So to recap, the fit is probably the most iffy part of the shoe. So try it on in store if you are able to before purchasing. And again, the cushion setup is definitely my favorite part of the shoe. And I recommend this to all positions, whether you play back row or front row, this is just a great all around performer. And to be honest, the KD15 line probably has the best colorways out of all Nike signature athletes right now. So that's like LeBron, PG, Giannis. KD definitely has the best colorways coming out. And even though I think the LeBron 20 is a slightly better looking shoe, the KD15s definitely have better colorways and they're like $70 cheaper. So if you're picking between the two, I might swing towards the KD15 as long as you can get your fit right. All right, that's gonna do it. Uh, hopefully that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you like these performance reviews, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my future uploads. And if you wanna see my performance review of the Braun 20s, you can check this video here. And if you want to check out my performance review on my favorite insoles, you can check this video right here. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.